Well there, hello, and welcome back um, to RHAP Rehap Ups for Drag Race Season 16. I am taking over the show for today. I am your host, Amon Adwin. Um, Liana has some family things that she has to attend to, and Beth um, is out for this week, but don't worry, everyone's okay. We'll be back together, I would assume, next week. But to help me steer this ship in the right direction, someone I am very familiar with because we have an entire podcast about something entirely different, Glee, hundreds and hundreds of episodes, so definitely check out The Choir Room if you haven't by now. But Matt Lagoria is here to host the show with me today. How are you, man? I am good. A little disappointed you uh, left the hello, hello, hello behind, but I'm sure. Oh my god! I'm sure Liana will forgive you. It'll be okay. Um, hello, but... hello, hello. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Amon was a little nervous. Doesn't usually open the show, um, I but I I'm am. I'm so excited to be here. I don't usually get a chance to do a full length recap of a Drag Race episode, uh, and this episode was a lot of fun. So I'm I'm excited to get into it with you. Yeah, um, it's a, uh, it's, cause yeah, I just, I've, I've never, I was just talking to Matt about this earlier. Like, I, this is my first time ever really hosting the show because it's <laughs> usually Liana, always, you know, mother of the ship, and then if not Liana, then usually Beth will take over. So it's kind of interesting. I'm like in the driver's seat, and I'm a little nervous. So if things are a little choppy, I apologize. But I think, I think we're gonna be doing. Just yeah, we'll be, fine. So, we got um, this. So how have you been feeling about the season so far? I know that we uh, checked in with you yes. a little bit uh, a while ago, but you know it's been it's been a few weeks. So how are you feeling now? You did? Did I not talk with you about? Oh, no, oh you about did. So, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was not on the podcast this season. <laughs> no, not on not on the podcast per se, but just like talking about the show. In, in person show. or in in on the phone. Yes, um, mm -hmm. I have uh, been enjoying the season just fine uh, to this point. Um, I would say that it hasn't been like you know a contender for one of my top five, top 10, maybe even seasons of drag race. There's just so many good drag race seasons out there, but I've still been enjoying it just fine. We have a very top four um, specifically. I'll just get shady right off the bat. A, a pretty strong three of the top four uh, going mm -hmm. into uh, the maybe not finale yet, but you know, the say final their names, episodes. say their names. Uh, it's a letter. Um, so, <laughs> but, but yeah, the season's been good. Um, I, I feel like, you know, last season set the bar so high with mm -hmm. the strength of not only the season, but like the cast, like going into the, last couple of rounds before finale it was like oh my god they're all so good the final mm -hmm. four was like a contender for the best top four in drag race history um but yeah the season's still pretty good and by the way before we get too deep into this podcast uh we're recording this on sunday march 31st and i want to say oh, a yeah. happy uh trans day of visibility to happy you yours. trans day of visibility yes also for those that for those that observe happy easter it is easter today right it, it sure is. is. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like I always like Easter is just always one of those holidays that just sneaks up, especially this year because it's like so is earlier than it usually is. But yeah, so happy Trans Day of Visibility and also happy Easter to those that um that uh that observe it. But um let's go ahead and get right on into this episode. So we um start things off. Um there was there was no mini challenge this week this week, was there? Because we kind of no. just went right into the into the the topic of this um this uh this this week's challenge which is the makeover challenge so right off the bat i i really thought that there was a chance that someone other than morphine was going to go because they have been talking about morphine's face and how she beats down every damn week i was like she's got this in the bag there is just no way i was like what are they gonna do is it gonna be another double save like, are they just going to do a top five? Like, I, in my mind, I truly thought that this was going to be straight up Morphine's challenge. So when it things did not pan out that way, I was, I, and I got to say, we can talk about it later when we get closer towards the runways, but I kind of really disagreed with the judges this week. Um, mm -hmm. So I was, um, I was shocked to say the least, but I personally, I think this is one of my favorite challenges. Um, I famously love the one that they did last week with the rooms. I love the room makeover challenge. And I love when they have to do the family resemblance because it really does show you um, just how well does your drag persona 
match over to something else or to somebody else. So I thought that this was uh, a really, really fun challenge. And I thought I loved the way that they chose the partners as well. Um, it did seem a little bit less production heavy handed editing because it, everything seemingly was by chance. Um, and it looked like most of the queens got who they wanted, although many of them said that they liked them all. So <laughs> I think there really was no losing there. But um, yeah, it was um, I, I, I'm a big fan of the makeover challenge. How about you? I think you just recapped the whole episode in one <laughs> spiel. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of, I just, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm trying not to jump no, the gun, but just, I just, we can just I stop have, it there. <laughs> you know, I just, I have, I have thoughts. Okay. But you, you go <laughs> no, ahead thoughts start. are good. Um, we, um, I, I'm, I was in the same boat going into this week as far as thinking that, okay, uh, it feels cut and dry that like more morphine's probably set up to go next. Uh, but yes, this mm -hmm. is an, a makeover challenge. This is morphine's bag. Why? Uh, what world are we going to, you know, see what narrative are we going to see crafted uh, where morphine mm -hmm. is the one that ends up somehow going home this week. They still crafted it. They found a way they made it happen. But um, yeah, I, I also thought like maybe either they drag, not drag them all, but maybe they bring everybody into the top five altogether because how mm -hmm. are they going to justify eliminating morphine this week? Um, I thought maybe there was a world and I'm not going to be shady the whole time. Q has been pretty impressive throughout different parts of the season, but um, mm -hmm. just the other person that I would have thought possibly could have gone home this week, if anybody at all, um, before seeing the challenge, I did think mm -hmm. she uh, did pretty well throughout the challenge this week. Um, so yeah, I, I was like, maybe it's one or the other. I'm not sure. Um, and then uh, I don't even know where to go next again. You, you hit a lot of different points, but um, <laughs> the, uh, the the were we just gonna jump right in with like the picking of the uh, yeah? How about we answers? just we go we go right into into um into who everyone was paired up with. I do not remember all of their names. I know they're drag names. Mm -hmm. I am their the names are escaping me for their actual <laughs> their actual names. I believe that Safira's partner's name was Nick, but it was a um, Nick, so, a Miguel, a Jonathan, and then I think oh Sebastian. Yeah, so Seb oh yeah, so Nick was with Safira. I'm pretty sure John no, was, was with, with Nick was with Plain. Let's not even try. But okay, Nick I know their Plain. names. I know the real name. So we have um, Plain Jane um, birthed her sister daughter, Lazy Susan. Then you have Q with Miss Luna. Um, then Morphine with Latina. That's a lot of L's right there, straight off the bat. Mm. And then Nymphia and Juanita Wind. And then um, Safira and Shakira. Um, and I'm glad that Safira ended up landing on Shakira because we get to see like during the workroom walkthrough that she was struggling with the naming. Just all around. So let's talk about Safira. Very interesting to see her this week because I do think that, yes, I think a lot of the times when you see someone that is dominating the competition, you do want to see that vulnerability and you want to see that chink in the armor. And I feel like Safira can sometimes come off as so nonplussed, especially during Untucked and everything, when people are asking about, you know, so how do you feel? How do you feel? She's like, I feel good. I feel great. You know, I'm good. And even, and even, with this particular challenge and the critiques that she got, I still feel like there was like a little bit of like this non plus energy. Cause like, she just knew that even if I do end up in the bottom or if I don't do well, I'm probably going to be okay. And so I just thought that this whole, this whole part of her narrative is very interesting because now we get to see what does it look like for her to be in the bottom. And it doesn't even look that much different from her being in the top, <laughs> to be honest. So mm -hmm. How did you feel about Shakira this or Safira this week? <laughs> Both. Um, Safira, <laughs> I feel like, is, is certainly going into the end game here, the front runner. Um, I feel like that's not, you know, a super hot take. So the and and I, I feel like a lot of the discourse that I've seen or even been a part of, oh, the cat gets to be in the video today. Um <laughs> usually, <laughs> usually when we were recording, my cat would be around. Uh, you couldn't even tell, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> um usually um where was i going with that safira i i feel like the discourse that i've seen has been that uh like who is the front runner like there are uh mm -hmm. four girls here three girls here that all feel like they could be contenders to win and you know there's safira with her four wins there's plain with her four wins and safira who from the very beginning well plain as well have just been standing out as like front runner um it's just mm -hmm. maybe like you said, like the lack of um, any kind of chink in the armor to this point, which comes in this episode of like, all right, well, we need to see you kind of not fail, but just like 
have a weakness in some capacity because sure there have been drag race winners that have gone all the way throughout the entire season that maybe just never have that chink in the armor but like it's a lot more enjoyable to see you know you have some weakness somewhere along the way and then how do you rebound from that or just right. how do you overcome exactly what Sophia did in this episode of just she had uh, an issue came up with the uh, outfit that she had planned on wearing and then she had to switch gears as quickly as possible it went better than it po you know probably could have but still you know not as perfectly laid out as some of the other girls had where their outfits did line up how they you know envisioned them going into the season so that's where yeah. you know she ends up in the position that she does within this episode of having to lip sync um but still like you know going into the end game where i'm still pretty much considering her the front runner from my perspective as who right. i think like will win should win um to just have this as a part of her journey where i imagine just going forward she'll be springboarding like all the way to the finish line um it, it's it makes the story more complete yeah i it's interesting now because you know with her being in the bottom but having those four wins it's like statistically has plain jane sort of surpassed um her at this point um canonically i kind of still feel like even though it wasn't official that one week with the the color runway plain was in the bottom okay they just didn't have a bottom too but like she was clearly in the bottom for that so I would like to believe in my head that that means that, you know, they are still sort of like on an equal playing field. Um, but I did think that it was just very interesting to watch her because I felt like she just did not have like a good point of attack or entry for this challenge because what she ended up putting on the runway, um, I was like, I mean, okay, so that, that, that does work and I agree with the critiques, but what I was more interested in, I was like, what were you planning on doing with that big ass geo dress to begin with? Like, yeah. unless you had two of those, how are you going to dress up? And I got the names now. Um, Mark. She was with Mark. Um, how are you going to dress up Mark with that? So I felt like I felt like no matter what, it didn't seem like her um her method this week was going to pan out in the way that she wanted it to. Um, although I'm glad that I I am glad that she sort of like she didn't want to make any excuses. She just said, like, look, this was like not my first choice, but I just trying to I had to pivot, I had to try to figure something out. And, you know, she did. It was serviceable. But clearly, when there are other people on here that have much more cohesive looks, you know, that's that's just kind of how the cookie crumbled. But, um, right. yeah. Yeah, I, I think that. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, I think that uh, she, like you, like we're saying, just did a, a very good job of uh, taking what she had and making something happen out of it where otherwise, uh, you know, just falling apart and 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 going with what she had and maybe what was she going to try to do, like disassemble the outfit and say like, oh, let me take less, let me take some some of this extra stuff on so that I can dance in it. Uh, you know, the this challenge doesn't usually have the choreography element uh, included, right? I'm, I'm, or am I crazy? Um, um it can like it, they they'll like, usually always usually right they'll usually have like the runway and then they'll usually it's not as separate as this one appear to be um a lot of the time what they'll do is just like they'll it'll be family resemblance and then on the runway they have to have some kind of like shtick it doesn't even necessarily have to be a dance but there has to be some sort of like story that is told with mm -hmm. the two of them um so yeah i did think that that was an interesting that's another reason why i was like i just don't see how morphine goes home because she also yeah. is a dancer so i was like this is like right up her alley but yeah it just it, i guess it felt like uh the choreography was kind of like surprising her as a part of this and we see that when she goes into uh Safira goes into the rehearsal with uh mark uh and then the two of them mm -hmm. are like okay this dress is not working she completely like strips it off right there throws it on the floor uh i guess we're not seeing that dress at all maybe it's on instagram who's to say but um that's not <laughs> not going to be a part of her journey and then she uh luckily has this very strong friendship with plain uh uh, who's gonna you know provide her an alternate dress which uh you know just to well i don't know we'll get to the runway later but um mm -hmm. was it wasn't exactly what she would have hoped for it was it was no. orange but yeah no. um who would you have wanted to pair up with <laughs> <laughs> i mean I feel like they all got different things out of their partners, right? So like the way that they were picking the partners was they just like stuck their hand into this uh little jar. I don't know whatever you Pink call it. Fairy box. Yeah, that. Um, and they pulled out a colored ball, which matched up with uh, the shorts on uh, the content or the the drag race dancer of their choosing, or 
you know, that they were paired up with. And uh, I just mm -hmm. feel like everybody got something. I mean, Morphine obviously got something that she was really looking for out of her partner, just mm -hmm. a very beautiful face to stare at, the exact one that she wanted. Um, mm -hmm. Nymphia got like a very strong connection and also a lot of laughs from her partner who turned out to not just be married which blew her away with the wind uh that mm -hmm. was just i i laughed a lot in this episode that was the first time of just her <laughs> no more surprises i can't do this anymore <laughs> yeah um, i think i think some of our hopes and dreams were dashed yes. <laughs> during that conversation uh, she was plain, she was a Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> no, I was just playing also, you know, just, like everybody everybody got like something from their partner that like it, they mostly seemed like good matches. Like Q got somebody who was like low-key shady and she was like, Oh, you're just like me. So they all worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did I did think that everything did sort of like um come together pretty nicely in terms of the personalities that we got. I thought Nymphia was hilarious this episode. I agree with you. I mean, even just in in the DR when she like lifts up her leg saying that she wants them all, I was like, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> Spray it down, honey. Yeah, but morphine like, too, again, but yeah, <laughs> morphine too. <laughs> but this is what happens when like you're locked in a hotel for weeks and weeks and weeks, and you're not allowed to talk to anybody else except your fellow sisters. So I mean, they're gonna be in heat, girl. They're gonna yeah, be. She, in heat. she was like, "I'm trying to behave. Uh, you remind <laughs> me of my husband. Uh, I don't know." <laughs> Which nice save. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I thought I thought that um all of them were um really just 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 game to do it. Um obviously, I mean they they, they all perform on uh Dr RuPaul's Drag Race live in Vegas, so they are very well acquainted with working with drag queens and know what it like, you know, what all of this goes into um being on the show and everything. So I thought that the pairings were were pretty good. Um, that was like that was the beauty of this uh, pairing style, where we've seen so many different types of pairings before of the makeover challenge of like who they bring in. They've brought in family. They've brought in friends. They've brought in you know random fans off the street. That you know uh, this is going to be your family member of the challenge. Um, and bringing in like actual performers, not only like dancers, but like just people who are used to being on stage. They already came mm -hmm. with you know some of them were like a lot of two of them at least were like oh i'm a shy person and rue it was so, so interesting because like rue seemed to know a lot of these guys well enough like to know them and their personality she was like nick you're always a pretty reserved guy and then you get up on that stage and you know you let loose uh but the fact that again that they were all performers that they all uh have to be trained to be on a stage to be in front of you know to be, to be under the lights and all that stuff it just made the whole challenge and the whole episode and all of them just perform so much better mm -hmm. very much so um let's talk about this tucking fiasco oh, um, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so nymphia was um attempting to school her sister daughter whatever they're calling their counterparts mm -hmm. um on the art of tucking um and Look, I've never tucked a day in my life. Um, I don't necessarily plan on it unless I actually do drag, like like real hardcore drag. Um, but even I could tell that whatever the hell Nymphia was doing was fucked, okay? <laughs> like, the balls were everywhere. Like, you were just asking for something to pop out on stage. And I'm like, I don't know how she's been going this long surviving, but I am so glad that... <laughs> <laughs> that morphine came in and stepped in and showed the ladies how it was really supposed to be done because I could not have that beautiful man thinking that that's what is supposed to be happening. Like, yeah. Just, it was so bad. So, I think so it was bad. morphine's partner that came over and as they were giving the demonstration and uh, they were just showing the visual of what's supposed to happen there, uh, the look on his face uh, just dropped as, as they were moving everything into place and explaining how it was supposed to, to happen. Um, yeah, again, I've also never uh, partaken, but uh, I <laughs> feel like I would take the lesson uh, more uh, from, from morphine than from Nephi. Yeah, it, it was a lot going on there. For sure. Um, another thing that we got to see, like during the um, during the walkthrough with Rue, is the um, her, him talking to Safira about like choosing a name um, for her sister. And I personally felt like Cynthia was fine. Safira and Cynthia sounded good to me, but Rue, um, you know, it's one of those things during the walkthrough. Like if Rue tells you, no, don't do that. He's clearly telegraphing something to you in the moment, and he suggested the name Shakira and. She went ahead and went with it, but I personally feel like, you know, 
I would have pulled a um, oh, what's that girl's name? I'm always forgetting the girl's names from uh, season twelve, uh, top two. What is her name? During the snatch game, but whatever, it, it doesn't matter. But like, I wanted her to have more confidence in the in what she wanted to go with, as opposed to like letting Rue sort of like stomp over that. Especially considering you know what was going to happen anyway. I don't think the name. I think the name was like the the least of your concern. But Simone, yeah. No, not Simone. Um, uh, uh, Gigi good. Gigi good. Gigi good. Gigi good. Oh. When <laughs> Rue was coming point. around with the snatch game, and she was like, "Oh, I don't think that being ro- uh, the the robot is really going to be good for you." Like, I'm having some concerns. How are you going to make it funny? And she was yeah. like, "I hear your concern. I do not have the same concern." So, like, I, I kind of <laughs> wanted one of those moments, but whatever. Um, you know, listen to Rue. I guess you know, do what you yeah. gotta do. There were some good moments with uh, Rue coming by in the workroom this time, like like that one of just like Safir speaking like a winner, like you know I know the deal here. Rue comes by, gives mm-hmm. you a tip, you got to take it. Um, the uh, Nymphia and Juanita Wind uh, segment was good. Rue appreciated the name, mm-hmm. and um, we got to hear more about you know just it's not like these dancers are permanent characters or permanent fixtures on the show, but to hear everybody's backstory in some sense, even if it's just like a small little something, like when Plain talks to uh, to her partner and then Nymphia getting uh, Jonathan here, uh, Juanita Wind, who is uh, talking about how uh, uh, Jonathan was like, oh yeah, I did sports as a child. And then one random summer, my mom drops me off at dance camp and here we are all these years later. Yep. It's just crazy how, you know, all it takes is that one little like, you know, spark uh, for the connection to be made and, and this is your path. I was so I was super jealous of it. Like, and Matt has heard me talk about this so many times as we've recorded countless episodes of the Glee podcast. But I have always wanted to be put in dance classes, but it was not for men or not for boys, rather. And so to hear Jonathan speak about like his mom just like throwing him in there, and then he at first was kind of awkward. He didn't he wasn't really sure about it, and then now all of a sudden he's on Drag Race for dancing. Yeah. So um, I thought that that was I, I thought that was really special. Um, Anything else from the walk? I'm trying to think. Well, yeah. So uh, two things. Uh, One, what does it say about Q that Rue had to ask Q? Like, are you known for being the shady queen? Like, she hadn't picked up on that at all throughout the entire <laughs> season. That Q like believes that that's the important aspect of her personality. She had to ask her. Yeah, yeah, I did catch Rough on to stuff. that too. Um, yeah, I, I, Q Q's whole journey has just been so interesting because I feel like, I mean, yeah, she has two wins, but at the same time, I feel like her narrative this season has always sort of just still been like. Mm, you're like you're just you're just close enough but not enough like you're, you're gonna get edged out each and every time so it's definitely like a version of the jan edit for sure for q yeah. there's there's elements of that just a very quirky personality that i imagine doesn't you know uh resonate with everybody uh and then the uh segment with plane and plane's partner uh where rue just lost her damn mind laughing at uh the name lazy susan uh it's like i'm saving the clip of rue laughing forever because it's going to get a lot of use out of me um like (laughs) You know, like sometimes you just fall into that like pit of laughter and you can't get out of it because something tickles you so much. <laughs> and I like I love when that kind of laugh happens. It like reminded me of being like back in high school when I couldn't control myself sometimes and I would get like kicked out of classes by teachers who were like, <laughs> Matt, like knock it off. And I'd be like, <laughs> st- I couldn't stop. Um, and that was Rue. Like, I don't know how long that laughter just went on there. Like, we know that Rue is a laugher, uh, but in that moment yes. of just not being able to let it go and planes looking around the room, everyone's staring at their table and playing just like i don't even know what i said that was that funny i just like it was a good name sure but rue just completely did not see it coming he i got first like when, when i watched it at the uh on friday at the bar i was i did the normal rule in the eyes thing it was like it was, was it that funny but then upon my rewatch i was like you know what it is kind of funny it is kind yeah, of the, funny. Name, the names work well together so she's like I what think... what are you going to be playing yogurt it's like no yeah. <laughs> I'm playing Jane and this is Lazy Susan. It works. <laughs> it, it it definitely works. Um yeah, so that was that was fun. I think she definitely probably had well, I kind of I think I've I think I like Latina. I think Latina is very funny to me. I, think that, I didn't I think that's Latina was the I, last the last one that I realized what was going on there. Yeah. I just I, <laughs> I, I heard them calling her Tina. So I, all I heard was Tina. And then towards the end of the episode, I heard a Latina. I was like, oh you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> see what she did there yeah um so yeah that was pretty much the work through um the walkthrough in the workroom rather um and then we do get to see um all of them have some time on the main stage with their partners um and you know coming up with whatever they're going to do um for the dance because they are um as matt mentioned earlier 
Um, it is a family resemblance challenge, but there is um, some choreography involved to Super Queen. Um, so we do get to see this. And the thing, one of the things that I was just kind of like shocked by was the fact that, well, first of all, I do think that it was really cool that all of them are professional dancers because that, I thought it was interesting to see which um, pairs the queen sort of took the yeah. took the the forefront or they deferred to the partner to sort of like help flush it out. So I thought that that was very interesting. What I found just sort of just crazy was the fact that Morphine does not know how to salsa. I'm like, and again, obviously you cannot stereotype people, but for her to talk about so much about all the dancing that she does and she is just so proud to be um, to be Latin and not everybody that is Latin knows how to salsa, but I just thought that it was just of all dances, girl, that's the one that you don't know. Like, I was just like, how? <laughs> so I thought that was, I thought I just, I, I laughed. I laughed. I was like, that was when I got my first instinct that I was like, Ooh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> she's not going to do as well as, uh, I would have, I would have liked, but yeah. Um, Look, yeah, she's perfected the... one one major aspect of her performing, and that is, you know, the mug. Uh, so other the BBL other aspect, yeah, for sure. <laughs> other aspects are just going to fall by the wayside. Um, I appreciated just that, uh, like, like Q. I feel like had the right idea here of just uh, saying Rue just wants us to have fun with this. Like this, definitely. That's what I got from the vibe of this. Like this wasn't meant to be, you know, the choreography challenge of the season. You know, there's been mm -hmm. some of those, and there's also going to be more of that to come going into you know the final uh, episode or two. So uh, this wasn't necessarily meant to be that, even though they do have professional dancers there. It was just you know this is you and your family member have some fun, mm -hmm. choreograph something a little cute, and make us you know make us all have fun together. So um, mm -hmm. and that's what they did. I feel like when you know we eventually do end up seeing uh the the routines it was just that's that's what they got yeah um this is the part where we do get to see um the gear start shifting for safira she she comes to rehearsal with the with the geo dress on realizes how um heavy it's going to be and she was one of the queens that sort of like took the lead on the dancing i mean she did not really defer to her partner at least not from what we saw um and so she we did get to see her trying to do some sort of like simpler dances she was doing the electric slide realized that she could not really move that well in the dress it was just swallowing up her form so she tosses it um and then we do get to see the choreography get a little bit more um just uh, there's a little bit more energy with with the choreo after she makes that decision but at that point it's like well girl what are you gonna wear what is he gonna wear like it's we're not we're not getting story girl it's not coming together so i was i was very nervous for her in that in that situation for yeah sure. and genuinely from that moment i think it became pretty clear to probably most of us watching that Safira was in bottom two already this week um just mm -hmm. because everybody else had kind of already had an established idea of what was going on and it would have been what a feat it would have been if Safira was able to get something else together that was again going to be better than what these other girls had and already had you know like that whatever they brought was going to work out uh, as far mm -hmm. as we were aware so um you know you're looking around at who's going to end up in the bottom in an episode like this you're already thinking that morphine might end up there just based on everything track record i don't know of like who you think is going to go home uh and then at this point i'm like oh safira has got to really find a way to pull something out here um and everybody right. you know that's that's uh, like a q is out here doing the mind makeup and you're like hmm, maybe this isn't going to land as well as uh it ultimately kind of does uh so you're thinking like there's an opportunity for that to be the person uh or the the pairing that uh you know falls a little mm -hmm. bit in the rankings but no safira just you know having the two different outfits that were just too vastly different uh it, it wasn't working yeah i so i went um i have the episode playing in the background right now just to help me visually and i did look and see what safira had brought at least for her partner like su uh, seemingly because she had like the the blue crystal geo dress and then during the um walkthrough with rue you could see sort of like um a similar design of like red geodes so I'm guessing maybe it was supposed to be like a fire and ice type deal. She would be blue and then Nick, or excuse me, Mark would be red. Um, so in my mind, I'm like, maybe that would have worked a little bit better. I think so. Cause it's a lot more cohesive at that point. But if the dress was just too damn heavy, then the dress was too heavy. Again, I don't understand these, these rules surrounding how many suitcases in ship people, are, because Safira, there is just no way. Out of all of the looks that she has had, she had that she had this big ass geo dress. I still don't understand how she got that pumpkin shit shipped over here. <laughs> I don't understand that. 
at all. That was crazy. So I really would love to talk with these girls again. Somebody ask these girls, somebody at Roscoe's, if you go to Roscoe's, ask that question, please, because I just need to know the, the rules because we've been hearing conflicting reports that there is no limit, but there is a limit. You only can only have two. And like, how big suitcases are we talking? Because I, uh -uh. do you think like there's a world where maybe some of the girls will like be working with a designer that may be based in LA, like where I imagine they record, I, I imagine the studios in LA. So like, maybe mm -hmm. they like work with designers out there so they can like not have to fly everything out and just and go yeah. pick it up when they get there and, and bring it in whatever kind of packaging they get from the designer. I mean, I, I could be just completely making that kind of thing up, but when you see an outfit like this, it's exactly like you're saying, it's just, how did that transport? I mean, I, I would not be surprised. I mean, I know specifically for the pumpkin look, um, the designers were in Philly because when I went to watch that episode during the commercial break, the drag queen that was hosting the the, the viewing party, like, let the designer speak. I'm like, hey, hi, my name is such and such. I designed the pumpkin dress. So I know at least for that look, that shit was made here. Okay. So <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know how it flew, but I, I mean, I would not be surprised if there are people that are a little bit more local. I mean, we do sometimes hear um, the queens talk about, you know, having to go out and get like last minute things for some of the looks like something falls through or they needed to add something while they are there and then they'll send the PAs um because the PAs will give them money or vice versa and then they'll send out the PAs to like grab whatever last minute materials that they need so I I'm sure that there's probably a few looks that have been born <laughs> in the yeah. hotel but um yeah it's uh it's just crazy I just because some of these and Nymphia too like all of those looks are so delicate and just so yeah, I, I mean, just, I just know, don't like, know. like the one that Safira had plus nymph like anything that is involving feathers in the way that all of those outfits did it's like how did that not get like smushed or you know just like compressed in it how does it come out looking as beautiful as you want it to i mean i'm sure they take it out the second that they arrive but uh mm -hmm. it's it's you know the kind of thing that we don't hear enough of these girls talking about uh off air i mean i'm sure that there are like podcasts um you know you have like your alaskas and willems that like talk about a lot of this behind the scenes stuff but um oh, willem, i don't know willem, I, mary willem will uh, tell all yeah. the damn dirty deeds <laughs> but she also has like a lot more that she wants to tell the world about rather than just uh you know how my outfit got to la um right so yeah um the uh back in the workroom like during the segment um i was kind of alluding to it earlier but the plain jane uh with uh lazy susan discussion that was going on about how uh both of them had similar stories uh relating to like their college experience of like going for this but also wanting to do something else uh susan was talking about like i, I wanted to uh i wanted to be in dance but uh the same kind of thing of just like i was closeted i didn't think that i would ever have a chance to come out people you know tell you when you're that young and you're doing dance that oh you're gay and you know you're a lot younger so you're not really comfortable hearing that kind of thing of course um and also like uh i think i think uh, lazy susan is nick right um and then and so he's talking about how he was hit by a car in college i was like oh my god um, yeah he was riding his bike um like you know it, ha i hate for it to be such a uh serious kind of matter that you know shakes you up to the point of like realizing what path you want to be on um mm -hmm. but such is life so the fact that that was enough for him to be like you know i'm not doing what I don't want to do. I'm going to do, uh, I want to, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to do what I want to do and, and go from there. Um, and then again, plane was connecting with that story and it just kind of brought them together before they get on stage and, you know, knock it out of the park. Yeah, it was, it was nice to see. And also just like affirming as someone who has like gone through similar struggles of just like, you know, trying to figure out like like what am i going to do with my life like is this worth it like is you know going pursuing you know pursuing the arts like we know we know the story like it's it can be rough it can be very rough it's not guaranteed i mean nothing in life is but this in particular is a very very tricky business to try to get into and stay in um i mean even even just getting on drag race alone like there are queens that have been auditioning year after year after year after year and they get a call back one year and they get nothing the next and then they get so yeah. so close the next and then and then it's it, it just never it, it just never happens so um i do I, I did like seeing them connect over that because i ultimately i did think that that really helped out a lot with the chemistry that we eventually do see mm -hmm. um we get to see nymphia open up um to jonathan yep jonathan um about like how she just always feels like she's never understood 
um and that she sort of like wears like this sort of like quirky personality sometimes as a bit of a mask because she would you know she just feels like people aren't just going to get her um initially and it's our tear up a little bit i was like okay nymphia okay a little mm-hmm. a little cry session okay i'm here for it um but I, one of the things that i did like the most is that she said eventually you know with the mask that she put on and then who she truly considers herself to be she was like they're both real they're both me so i just have to find a way to have them coexist and just be nymphia wind and yeah. I thought that that was really very telling, and I liked yeah. that. And they had a good connection too. I mean, Nymphia is the one person that gets paired with a, a married straight man, uh, mm-hmm. or or maybe not the only married. I don't know if anybody else was married, but the only, uh, as far as we were aware, uh, straight man of the bunch. Uh, so you know, everybody else is connecting through stories of like similar experiences and whatnot. Uh, but I thought that her partner did such a good job of just like listening to her and supporting mm-hmm. her, and being there for her, and telling her, and you know, I. I and just like i don't know you very well but i can tell you that like you are you know as you know uh, good at this as you want to like as you know you are um all the self-doubt that you know you're telling me that is creeping in like it's you know it's just that and you have to you know be able to look past it and all this kind of stuff so i thought he was a very nice and supportive partner so just another again these were all very good matchups it's not like you had one single Mm -hmm. pairing which sometimes we've had in the past of like oh i don't know how to work with this person because either they are completely um you know, you, you weren't going to have any of them be bad performers. Like we've had that before of like, oh, this person just can't walk in heels and can't walk straight. Uh, so, you know, mm-hmm. I can't work with them. Um, they were all yeah. good on the performance aspect of it. And they were all just there to be supportive with their queen. So it just, it was, it was a really good pairing. I hope they do. No, that's a, time. Th- yeah. That's a, that's a very fair point because a lot of the time when we do get these makeover challenges, sometimes it's, it, there, there are people that are just like not in this realm at all. Like one, one time it was fans, which, that helped because they're fans. So they at least have an idea of what to do. So one time there was just like a bunch of like influencers. That was the one with like Frankie Grande and Tyler oh, Oakley. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I th- I did think that it was a nice equalizer that all of them were on a similar playing field, especially like this late in the competition. Because then yeah, you can't blame it on you can't blame it on your character or your or your partner rather. It's it's you, girl. So mm-hmm. um, I thought that I think that's a pretty yeah, nice touch. Yeah. I'd like that we got to see a little bit of the shade with Luna. Uh, huge partner. She was. I believed her that she wasn't trying to be shady. She was like, she's like, so Morphe and like Beauty and Beast. And she's like, excuse me. <laughs> but I like that Morphine took it. She was like, you know what? F y'all. Like, it's okay. I, I'll take it because I like to dish it so I can take it. Um, but yeah, Miss Luna was definitely coming hard for her. I was like, ooh, not the not the not the bottom two shape. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> rain it in, sis, rain it in. Um, and the fact that she went home, damn. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, before we get into the looks, um, who would you have wanted to be paired up with? Not the partner, but the qu- the queen. The queen. Who do you oh, want um, making you over? I mean, who do I want like putting? putting the whole thing together i'm probably saying morphine i mean just based on past looks um i mean i know i'm picking the person who ended up going home but um i just feel like i'm safest in her hands uh you know i I don't i don't make me keys um you know plain would have been a fine choice um nymphia would have gotten her tears all over my outfit and that would have uh been a lot (laughs) i'm just kidding um but i don't know probably morphine what do you what about you Definitely Nymphia. I would want okay. Nymphia to just put me in something so luxurious, something so stylish, something so chic, and just I want her to like paint my. I want to be a vision of Nymphia Wind. Like I need Let's to see. Is Nymphia is Nymphia doing the tucking? Because if so, I'm sorry to let you know. Oh, I forgot about that shit. Damn. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Well, maybe I might have to. Oh, mm. <laughs> you know what? I would gladly suffer <laughs> for, <Okay. laughs> for that one day i will i will gladly suffer the tuckage <laughs> but outside of that i'm like girl i might have to do my own tucking because i don't know about this mm-mm, mm-mm, it's not it's not mm-hmm. giving um but all right let's go ahead and get into these looks um now liana did inform me about where to find the looks however I was not able to crop them in the way that I would like to. So it is a little bit crowded of an image, but I figured it is much better to at least have them than not. So let me pull this up. 
and Kelsey, Kelsey Ballerini had, was the while you're while you're doing that. Uh, Kelsey mm-hmm. Ballerini was the guest judge this week. How familiar are you with her? I know her by name. That's essentially that's it. exactly where I'm at. Uh, she's a you know a, a country singer, but that's pretty much all I know. It was, I thought she was an interesting choice. It felt like this didn't really mesh with like her being there but yeah i would have like whatever. imagined maybe she gets the call earlier in the season because now we're getting down to the wire but um mm-hmm. also she could just be and i am thinking that she's because i'm not like super familiar again outside of name recognition but anyway um <laughs> maybe they chose her because they knew beyonce was going to release her country album <laughs> on the same day so. <laughs> by the way how are you doing are you doing all right <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, quick side. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time because I know people don't give a fuck about Beyonce, but oh my god, guys, it is so good. Am I gonna let it dethrone Renaissance for me? Probably not. I think Renaissance is gonna be very hard to top for me personally because Renaissance is just such a, a joyous and queer and it was like a mark album. in your life. Like it was it, just, a- it really <laughs> was. Renaissance was crazy. Like I am still still reeling from the the beauty that is renaissance so it probably will never top it but this is probably some this is probably her best vocal work out of any of her projects bar none the vocal layering on this album the the harmonies on this album the stylistic choices what she's doing with her voice the the people that she brought on to it vocally this is her best work if you are a country fan there is absolutely no way you are not going to like this album and i'm not really a country fan and i love it so that's just my cool I actually little... thought I thought I may be hosting this podcast by myself this week because Liana's <laughs> busy, Beth is busy. I thought you were just not going to give up an hour of listening to this new album in order to do a podcast. I, I, had I a thought whole, I'd be by myself. I had a whole listening party Thursday night. Like I invited a bunch of people over. We did a potluck and it was Tex Mex themed slash Southern. And then as soon as midnight hit, baby, we turned that shit on. We turned the lights down low in the living room, in the fireplace, and we put that shit on and I lost my mind. So all I can say is I'm like jealous of people who like hear a song like on a new album for the first time and they're like, that's my song. Like that's the one. And I'm like, I need to listen to it a couple of times to just like really feel it within me. Um, so like I've listened to the album once, fantastic, no notes. Um, but like before I can like actually pick favorites, I need to do like one or two more listens, but that's just me. Uh. Besides the song with the song with Miley is just so, so good. good. I mean, that's I, I want to like my favorite, but I also don't want to be the most basic ass bitch. And, you know, uh, I you know, know Michigan, but like so. it's sometimes it's sometimes a fact is a fact, though. You know what I mean? Because I felt the same way. I was like, oh, my God, I'm really going to go for the Miley cover. OK, anyway, let's not talk about, I can talk about this. <laughs> hey, look, it's Nymphia. <laughs> and <laughs> so up first we have Nymphia and <laughs> Juanita. And Juanita Wind. They went for like this. Birds of Paradise, uh, you know, Sesame feathery, Street. yeah, just very, you know, beautiful look. Um, so, what do you think about this one? I, I personally loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Um, we when we get to do we do like critiques all together with the runways. I mean, just as far sure. as yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, um, TS was talking about. I would have liked if they swapped colors and Rue asked Nymphia, like, would you have ever imagined swapping colors here where, you know, your partner's mm-hmm. wearing yellow and you're wearing, and, and TS was like, I get what she was saying of like, you know, where you're looking at yourself instead of like being within your yellow. And Nymphia's like, no, I was always going to be yellow because I wanted to be yellow. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's fine yep. with me. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, I, I even saw a visual on Twitter of like, then, you know, of yellow, but also plenty of not yellow within Nymphia's, uh, outfits throughout the season and you know even uh, you know ts madison being like i've only been here four times that you have been wearing yellow like that's unfortunate pi- uh, timing you know wise that you haven't mm-hmm. been able to experience some of the other things that she's had going on but um, l- like michelle said that's her thing that's her branding she's gonna get all the yellow endorsements when she gets out of here and what's more important honestly whether she wins comes in first second third fourth fifth uh you know the money is gonna start coming in after because of all the yellow that she's wearing and uh exactly. she executes it i think very well here um with you know two outfits that just go very well together you absolutely see the family resemblance um you know there are stronger and i that, that that's why uh nymphia doesn't win this challenge but uh certainly you know high safe for sure, for sure. And yeah, I I I do I like that um that uh Michelle sort of like came to her defense in that because you're right, like that that's her brand. And let's let let's not like act like y'all didn't cast her and she wasn't all up in yellow in her casting tape. I'm sure she was. <laughs> so you yeah. knew what was gonna happen when you cast her. Um and you know, but to 
to TS's credit, like there are times when she was not in yellow, but TS, you just weren't booked that day. So sorry about it. You know, <laughs> like, I feel you know, like so. <laughs> I feel like there could be a world where should Nymphia have gone for like a, mu- a more mustard type yellow boots where like uh what's mm-hmm. her partner's name uh juanita juanita's wearing like this purple at, on top and like a little lighter pinkish towards the bottom orange and yellow are in the same family but they're not the same color so maybe if there was if they were wearing the same color boots or just like more similar you know again yellow and yellow maybe it's a little bit stronger of a visual i don't know see i think i think the orange is the right choice because i feel like it simulates duck feet you know what i mean like it's mm-hmm. supposed to look like a like a bird's like foot. So I think it I think it works. I think that the the running theme is just like the pastel of it all. Um that combines the two of them together. Um and um yeah, I just I I thought that this was a fantastic work. I think she did a really good job. Um and I yeah. liked the beaks that they had as well. That was that was a fun little yes. little touch to it. So yeah, I think that um visually, like it definitely is a cohesive look, but I think you're right. It's definitely I I I definitely mm, mm. okay. Well, you know, let's keep talking about the other ones and then I'll see where I can grow. I, I liked so, when actually, they also thinking... when they get Go to ahead. the critiques, and um uh, I think RuPaul was the one that was asking uh um what's her name? Uh Juanita about like so like did you talk? She's like, Well, how'd it go back there? And she's <laughs> like, I don't know. I looked in her and I thought to myself, I would. I would. <laughs> <laughs> and did you? <laughs> Not yet. Mm. <laughs> All right. Who is next? Q and Luna. Yes. I um, don't like it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I would say that like my big thing was coming out of the episode. I most forgot this one. Um, uh, and that's you know, for for better or for worse, given some of like like Safira's choice was memorable for a different reason. Um, it took me like going back to rewatch to be like, what did they wear? Oh yeah, it was just clown circus like monster teeth, uh, claws like you know horns. It was like yeah. all, all of these things mashed up in once where it worked enough. Um, I wouldn't say that. I, I feel like I like it more than it sounds like you do, but um, it's hard to like put a memory on it because there's just so much happening. Yeah, I just, my eyes just couldn't stop moving. Like, I just couldn't understand what I was looking at. And, like, you know, look, I don't, I hate to yuck people's yum. Um, because, like, if this is your aesthetic and this is, like, what you go for, that's fine. I think, I think that quirky definitely works on Drag Race. Plenty of queens, quirky queens have won and they have looks that are in a similar vein. But I just felt like this one just did not feel, I just couldn't, I couldn't understand it other than it being quirky for being quirky's sake. Yeah. Um, so like I thought that the I thought that the hair and the makeup was great. I thought that that was like kind of a good tra- a little bit. I did feel like a little bit like it was um, and this is again, I am not a makeup artist, so please take what I am saying with a grain of salt. But it felt like this was like a touch easier because it was like just so much white, like, and that's not necessarily hard to do, um, as opposed to like other people that are blending a bit more. Now I could be completely off base here. So again, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But to me, it just didn't feel as, um, it's easy to be like, resemble somebody if you're just have both have white on your face. You know what I mean? Like it didn't feel, I didn't like, I, I feel like I would not look at this look and be like, that's cute. You know, I just, and- I, I just didn't get that. She acknowledged, uh, you know, a couple different times of like, I'm taking a big swing here. This is a, a bit riskier than everybody else. Like, I'm going to just go for it and, and, you know, see what happens. So I can imagine you know, kind of thought process and planning of like, you know, there have been plenty of family resemblance challenges. You know, you just both wear red, you both wear green, whatever it is. And, and you know, you kind of go right. from there. But um, she obviously went into this knowing she wanted to do this, you know, big wacky kind of outfit. Um, she had teeth, you know, the teeth are on both of them. So she has this kind of going um and when they do their choreography you know they uh the judges loved how they incorporated like thriller into it and whatnot so you just take like all of these similar kinds of outfit choices and makeup choices hair choices dance choices that uh all are in the same kind of like category and ultimately you know um i don't know that it was well, I definitely feel like it wasn't executed to like the highest level that it possibly could have been, which mm-hmm. could have been, uh, you know, a concept that earns them uh, the win of the week, but um, maybe just like not enough of like a full vision. It's like, okay, we're doing something fun, right. but what exactly is it totally all together? Right. Right. I don't know. I mean, 
it works. It reminds me of Crystal Method. That's what it reminds me of. But I'm also yes. rewatching her season right now. So that's yes. kind of like top of mind. But okay. But moving like, on. It also, I mean, the, it also the, reminds the me is, of that. Yeah, Go ahead. The thing is what? <laughs> it reminded me of um it remind what is that? It was an old cartoon on Nickelodeon. Ah Monsters. Is that what it was called? Ah, real monsters. Called yes, yes. Yeah. It, it reminded <laughs> Not me so Q much. Being <laughs> ah, real monsters. I hated that show. I liked no, I liked it enough. I hated that on, show too. When it came so on, I was like, there's so many other shows I want to be watching and not all real monsters. I feel like, like every time I watch it, I hate watch it. I couldn't. The I couldn't freaking dude holding up his it. eyeballs. Like, get out of oh here. Oh, my God. Like, what, ah. was, who, what? Who made that? And who decided that was going to be for kids? Like, what was going on was in the 90s? On a lot. Um, <laughs> all the damn time. Like, there's nothing else. Like, this, thank God um, that SpongeBob came and, like, took over. Because what the hell? <laughs> all right. um, wait. So anything else for you? Suppose like uh, Safira does, you know, the outfit that she brought that she was planning and it goes over well. I mean, are we are we looking at being uh, in the bottom two alongside Morphine? Because I think Morphine was always going to be in that spot. So is it Q? Is it Nymphia? It's not plain. Wait, if you're, you're saying if Sim, if Safira wasn't in the bottom? Or? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm, I personally don't think. Mm, I, I would have. I would have put this towards the bottom. It's not a again, it's not a fail. It's just well, it's final five. Someone's gotta be in the bottom. Yeah, someone's gotta be in the bottom, and that would have I would have been like, sorry, girl. <laughs> I think they would have been able to justify of like uh, we appreciate that you took a big swing, but like not sure. Um yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Just just curious. Moving on. All right. We got plain Jane and lazy Susan giving us a like a, a bumblebee type deal look here. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. It it's good. It's good. Yes. I think the reason that plain Jane won this challenge was because of lazy Susan. Point blank period. <laughs> I think okay. Lazy Susan's vibe check, she passed. That the the inner transformation, like intrinsically that we saw with her, that I think is what won this challenge. This look is simply fine. Um, I don't necessarily think that it is like signature plain Jane. Um, it doesn't scream plain to me. Um, but then again, a lot I feel like a lot of her looks don't really scream plain to me. I think that she's very versatile in that way but i ultimately i don't think that she family resemblance to me not quite i think that there are stronger ones here um but lazy susan the way that she emoted on that stage in both the walk um the walk the runway and the dance just ate it she ate it she ate left no crumbs that split at the yeah. end of that was the perfect punctuation for the end of that dance routine Lazy Susan won this challenge. Plain Jane did not win this challenge. <laughs> my my thought and take on it was I feel like this outfit, everything about their performance gave me sugar and spice. And there's a reason mm. sugar and spice like took over the scene, especially on TikTok, uh, you know, for like that generation, uh, essentially of, you know, people enjoying drag. Um, and I mean, just mm. literally look at the hair, look at, you know, everything about the way that like they're standing in these poses here. Um, you know, it's a family resemblance challenge and, uh, you know, the two uh, queens performing are giving a little bit more than family at times in the way that they're, you know, uh, interacting mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of the same thing that you get out of a lot of sugar and spice performances, like, you know, being the quirky, you know, uh, like just over the top, uh, you know, everything that, that, that goes into, uh, the way that they present on stage. Um, so that's, right. that's what I was getting out of this. And it's like, we saw sugar and spice separately, you know, walk down the runway, but never together. And then I think if we did there on the runway, it, this is what it is. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, by no means am I saying that these two won <laughs> because of that, but it's just like something that is, um, you know, uh, uh, an aesthetic that is, uh, still popular ish at the, time in the drag scene right. I, uh, I, I could be off but um i thought that they still both did a great job i agree that uh lazy susan was the uh bigger star it's like we know what plain jane can do but of all of the uh you know the 
drag uh, drag race live dancers that came in lazy susan did a great job uh, mm -hmm. you also have the aspect of like rue again seemed to know nick um and you know say like i know you i know your personality you're a little bit more timid mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. then you get on stage you perform yeah, yeah. You, you kill it um and then so for lazy susan susan to come out here and just match playing jane's energy and completely you know go off i think uh it resonated pretty well see by the win yeah, I think Rue definitely uh, tipped the scales in that in in that yeah. way because of the yeah. fact that there was like a it was kind of like similar to when uh, uh, Sephiro won a couple weeks ago because of the fact that she's slew footed. She's like, mm, them slew feet. Mm, that's my mom. That's my dad. That's my cousin. I see you. Like it was like his whole life flashed before his eyes, and the next thing you know, <laughs> congratulations to Sephiro. You are the winner of this week's challenge. So, um, yeah, I think that that definitely helped out, and that ass was sitting. Like, that ass was sitting, okay? So, definitely, they they did a good job, and I think um, I think they probably had the most favorable edit, considering that we did get to hear, again, them talk so much about, like, wanting to be able to express this part of themselves, but never feeling like they could, and now that they're free to do so as adults, they are just living their oats, living the fantasy. So, yeah, uh, Lazy Susan, girl... You might need yeah. to. You might need to bring Susan to Vegas. You might need to. She, like, from time she, to time. she was asking, "Where's my contract?" Um, Honestly, like you, can you imagine? Like that would be so funny. Like if a pick remember actually ends up on Drag Race, because I think, because it was um, Cameron Michaels, like his entrance line during back during season ten was like, "Well, I originally auditioned for Pit Crew, but this is going to be so much fun." So like, I'm like, I'm wondering if that will if we'll ever see the day that. Uh, a pick crew member takes. The I would say I, I would not be surprised at all. Like that's a great story. Because uh, I mean, you're already there. Like you, yeah. you know it. You know what I mean? Like that. We, I would root for that. Like I want to see yeah. that actually. So hey, pick crew, come on now. Yeah, Give I feel like crew. I've seen a, a lot of discussion as far as the this look goes. Where, um, not necessarily just like people thinking other uh, pairs should have been the winners, but like over the history of this challenge it's like well um they've said before like the judges have given critiques before of saying like well you don't have to be identical like this isn't an identical twins challenge it's a family right. resemblance so you're supposed to you know find a, a common link uh and and have that resemblance going so does playing like you know, all the automatically get this automatic win of just you're dressed identical and that's the most you know resemblance that we can see up there um so i don't know like it, i don't think it should have been an automatic win but i i also don't think that necessarily yeah. was why uh they got the win i think that the performance that came along with the choreography all together it was just uh, a pretty complete package yeah that's why i was kind of like that's why i was like Ugh. This is a vibe check win for them and not like visually because I felt like, and we're about to get to it next, but like one of the critiques that um, Morphine got was that the look was simple. I was like, okay, what was, what was Planes then? Because that was also very simple. Yeah. But, you know, I just, yeah, whatever. I think <laughs> she is next, actually. Is she next? Nope. It's Safira and uh, I'm forgetting the name. Shakira. Shakira, <laughs> Shakira, Shakira. So, like, let um, me just get this quickly out of the way. Uh, did the blue underneath Safira's dress bother you? Yes. Yes. Because I was like, am I, am I, am I the problem or uh, <laughs> what's the blue doing pick, here? But yeah, you can't even see it. You can kind of see it, there, it, kinda see it in, the, in the bottom right, right, like right here. But um, you can see it like when they're walking down the runway together. Besides the it, fact that yeah, they're just, just in two different outfits, there's it blue. Felt like it was trying to like come out of there. Like it was. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it was just so much going on. I don't know. And this is wait. So plain. Let her borrow this. Correct. The the dress that was borrowed was uh, Shakira's. Shakira's dress. Got it. I believe. Okay. Yeah, Safira. No, I no, <laughs> no, no. And she knows, no. like she knows this was a no. You know, she uh, had to pivot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you but you lucky you got those four wins, girl, because mm. she. She still did, I think, again, the best that she could have uh, within she you know, what she had to work with here. Um, at, at a certain point, it's like, you know, I'm not even if I'm Safira, I'm not worried about the blue. I already know, you know, we have probably the least, uh, you know, family resemblance, like whatever outfits we're, we're both wearing orange. Like, congratulations to us. We made something work. Um, yeah. But they the performance, I thought they did a, a pretty good job with the, the judges seem to agree. They uh, had good things to say about the energy that they had together. But I mean, it, like uh, Michelle was saying, of just it's two completely different stories um I, I don't really know what to you know link you two together with to say well this except you know orange the family of crystal uh what, what what's this family about
orange. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I thought that the, um, I, I liked the hair. The hair was, the hair did give me Safira, um, the, the one that Shakira is wearing. Um, yes, I yes, thought, yes. I think the makeup is fine. I think that the beat, the beat looks good. Like I, if I was looking at Shakira without Safira being there, I would, I think that I would easily guess that that is Safira's paint job. So I think that that was there. I just think, yeah, the, the, the outfits are just so distracting, so distracting. And it does sort of feel like, it feels like Shakira kind of ate you up a little bit. And it's like, interesting because i feel like her look is so much like more understated than yours um so in that like regard it would seem like my eyes were being pulled more to safira but not that's the thing with, yeah like if i if i like put my hand up in front of my screen right now and completely block out shakira which like no offense she looks great but if i'm just looking at safira it's like damn you look great um mm -hmm. Not what this uh, yeah. specific challenge was for. I don't know if she was not going to wear this orange at all. Uh, you know, if it was just one of the backups that she had laying around for a rainy day, which it came in handy here. But um, it would have been a shame to just never see it. It just it didn't, you know, meet exactly what we were going for here. And I would say that um, Shakira just. I don't know if I'm just being super harsh on her because of the outfit that she had to, to work with and it not having anything mm -hmm. to do with this challenge. Um, I thought it was like one of the lesser exciting uh, family members out of yeah. the, the group of five i don't know i liked the shtick that they had going on like how they presented it on the runway it was sort of like you know she's like the stage mom and you know this is the daughter in training so i, I mean i i like that through line that was fun but yeah just it just it, it just doesn't coalesce that well i really feel like i think i think that like if, if this was going to be the end result girl you should have just gone with whatever that first look was and you should have just tried to figure out some choreography that was going to work with that big look, you know what I mean? And then, cause I would much rather the critique be, cause I feel like the, the name of the challenge is family resemblance, right? So even if the dance in my mind, even if the dance was like not as good, I feel like if the look is serving, that will save you. And then even if you do end up in the bottom, you're probably not gonna go home anyway. So mm -hmm. I would have much rather you just taken the risk with the first choice um, as opposed to giving us this, cause this is just not, it's not giving, but you know, I like that she didn't try to make an excuse. She was just like, look, and I'm also saying that now. What did she say? She was like, it is what it is. And Diana Ross is in the whiz. I was like, yes, I've never heard that before. <laughs> Here is like such a, she is such like, a, she is a old black, like auntie. Like she is just so just like old soul. Just At like, the crazy age of 34. <laughs> I know it's great. Like, I, but even like, even when I met her, I don't know if you listened to the podcast where I talked about it, but like, even yes, like yes. meeting her, uh, like you just got like this. I, what what they talk about on the show about like the presence that she has, it's it, it it's true. It's very true. Like she's just so just how you doing, baby? Like it's just very <laughs> like I can't I can't take it. But um, yeah, this was not it, girl. But that's okay. That's okay. It is what it is. Dana Ross is in the wind. We were on a hot streak, you know, three wins in a row. You gotta cool down for the row, you know. for the big finish. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You gotta go get a little, a little bit of drama, and I felt bad for her partner because, like, you know, when we, when you know, during the walkthrough or the, during the workroom session, they were talking about, like, you know, what, they, what, like, what do you want? Like, what, like, how, like, what is your drag aesthetic? Like, what do you like? And Mark was like, I really, I love drama. I love like something big, and that is typically what Safira gives. And so for this to be the end result, it's like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not yeah. sure if Mark's fantasy was truly lived in this moment, but whatever, it is what it is. It's okay. Moving on to who I believe is the winner of this week's challenge. Whoa. I said it. I, said it. I fucking said it. I Morphe mean... deserved to win this challenge. She deserved to win this damn challenge. Okay. So... Now, I'm not going to forget what I said about Lazy Susan. Again, I think Lazy Susan sort of had like the biggest physical sort of like embodiment of transformation. But I don't think that that's necessarily the criteria for the challenge. It's not whose partner is going to like feel their oats the most. It is resemblance. And I feel like that is fucking morphine. Like I, yeah, it's, and for the critiques to be about like her arms, I'm like, that's your fault. Y'all chose pit crew members. <laughs> if you wanted dainty women, then get dainty women. Like, it's not her fault that, like, this this is a hulking man. <laughs> like, what did you want her to do? Like, well, like, I, I feel like the, uh, was the comment specifically about the sassels? I thought I was also looking at the tattoos. That was like, you know, not not again, like distracting, but again, you chose the pit crew, and Cameron <laughs> Michaels had tattoos all up and down his body, and they loved everything that she wore. 
Okay, and she was also very toned. Okay, I'm always bringing up. I have such a bone to pick with Cameron Michaels. I really need to seek therapy because it's. I bring her up almost every damn time <laughs> together. Um, it's I. I don't know. I just well, felt that the, I well, thought that this whole critique was just so so unfair. I really things that agree. I things that I notice here as we're looking at these pictures again. Of course, if uh, you know anybody's not watching along on YouTube, that's where these pictures are for you to see. Um, the okay, so the necklace. Number one, I'm like, okay, um, not that they need to be the exact same, but like from what I can tell, it looks like uh, the uh, morphine's necklace is is obviously this red that matches the dress. Oh, purple? It almost looks purple. Uh, I think maybe it's that's like just a, the it's just um, I think they're like kind of like iridescent crystals. Okay, um, because I don't know, just two different styles of necklace. Like I like I'm just picking apart where I feel like the judges might have been picking apart. Um, and then on what's morphine's partner's name? Uh, Latina. Latina. Um, the hair doesn't like. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to to say about it, what to feel about it. It just kind of feels like it's just her her hair. It's just there. Um, while everybody else kind of went bigger and bolder. I don't know. I thought I I look at I look at Latina and I I clearly know who this is. Everything from the paint to yes, even the hair. I just like and they're saying, oh well, the, his arms are so big, so you needed to give bigger hair. And I'm like, ah. Okay, maybe. Just like, are we talking before they started? <laughs> like, are we talking about like body size and proportions, or are we talking about like what they actually look like? You know what I mean? And I just felt like, and for the critique about the outfits being simple, okay, so was plain Jane's. Like, I just, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just felt like they were being. It just very. It felt very much like we have our top four. This is the well, right yeah. Level. You know that's the case, of course. <laughs> And like imagine like, a world where we're looking at like a sin where just like close your eyes and imagine, or maybe don't close your eyes so you can actually look at morphine here. But like imagine that morphine's the front runner and morphine comes out in this and uh and Latina comes out at like you know exactly no differences at all. Um, where again, this is your front runner to win the competition. Do they look at them differently rather than the way that they will look at them, knowing that this is our most likely fifth placer when they come out onto the runway? I feel like I I, I think so. Probably. I think so, I think a little bit. Um because there's, you know, really not much to uh, critique here. Again, I'm, I'm like pick, they're picking at the hair, at the necklace, or whatever, you know, tattoos. Um, because they obviously had pointed out some reasons as to why this didn't work for them as well as some of the others did. But like their choreography, I thought was very good together. I thought they looked, uh, you know, yeah. good. I thought walking down the runway, they looked like a good duo. Um, but I love the enough. F. The S uh, kiss at the end, I thought it was like a, just a signature, signature morphine, like, you know, BBL. It's like the bottom of the dress for both of them is is very similar and just looks so good. Uh, I mean, I, I, if I really wanted to pick it apart, I would say maybe maybe the dress is just a touch too short, maybe. But like, I don't know. I thought that the proportions, especially like the way that the way, like, especially with him being as vascular and muscular as he is, I thought that this was stunning on him. I just... I don't know, man. I I uh, I I agree with you, Morphine, because as soon as like I didn't watch the entirety of Untucked, but like, you know, um as they're leaving, and she's like, the judges said that, that my look was just not that good. And I was like, I don't agree, I don't agree, I don't agree. I was like, Yes, like I don't either. Yeah. Like I, I just feel like I think you're getting played here, girl. Like I I don't know. I just felt like there was there was definitely something here. I think that family resemblance was achieved. I think that's the name of the game, and I think that this is a clear top, but so Safira is in your bottom two for obvious reasons. Who else are you putting in the bottom two if you're keeping? I would have to put Q. Yeah. Okay. I would have to put Q. I think I think that everybody else's looks were just a little bit more you they just made more sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um yeah. the birds. And I think you're certainly not alone in that. Yeah. So yeah. is that everyone? Unless, I mean, uh, unless, unless Dawn's still hanging around somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I missed Dawn. Her presence they was said, actually was missed. This episode. Was it I Nick? It. I think that they were joking. Was like, oh, Nick's like a uh, <laughs> a, a hairier a version Dawn. of Dawn or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. That was funny. Okay, so we get to the lip sync. Um, obviously, Safira. I mean, we knew that Safira was going to be in the bottom. Um, and um, unfortunately, Morphine is in the bottom as well. Uh, we get our, um, oh, how do we, how do you feel about the dance? I think the dance was pretty, you know, straightforward. Yeah. We kind of mixed I in think, some I, discussion as we went along. Yeah, I it, think, it, it, it was, again, it was just having fun. Yeah. I think that plane, I think plane and, um, 
and lazy did a, a i think they probably had like the best like the most memorable part at least for me which you know yeah. gives more credence to why they won like i get it like i'm not saying that plain should not win but i just i personally would have not picked plain um yeah, and my biggest yeah, takeaway I mean, was also just uh, mm -hmm. Super Queen, um, so triggering, mm -hmm. so so triggering. Like, stop making Why? me remember All Stars Four. Um, <laughs> stop making me remember Naomi Smalls not getting her win. Stop making me remember Moni Cart like giving it her all, uh, and also not win. Um, ugh, yeah, I love All Stars Four. It's very contentious. It just it's very contentious back to the time and place, and uh, but I loved it. I, I think the ending I, at the time the ending was like well, this is some bullshit but now it's kind of like a, it's a bit of a gag now like I'm kind of like oh okay it's I just like a big seen the live it's yeah I was just it's a it's a big like like stamp in Drag Race history uh you know right it's have a it's a what? big punctuation mark um have you ever seen the live video of them uh, um, uh Trinity and Monet watching the finale together to see who wins Probably. and um. They, they announced it for the first time in Drag Race history, it, it, we have a tie. And like Monet or Monet is like, oh my God, what? Oh my God, like clearly very excited. And Trinity is just like staring up the screen, like, wait, so mm. did we not get the money? <laughs> I, was like, mm -hmm. I was like, ask the real questions, girl. She was like, are we splitting this shit? Because I did not spend all this damn money for me to get $50,000 and not the 100K. I was like, you better ask that question. You know, meanwhile, I'm sitting there like, what about Naomi? But it's fine. Uh, it was a strong top yeah. four. Uh, but that's not this top four. Sorry to distract us. but That um, is not this top four. We do get to the lip sync. Um, Safira and Nymphia, excuse me, Morphine in the bottom. Um, they are lip syncing to, what's it called? Is one of Kelsey's songs. Miss Me More. Name. Miss Me More. Um, and... Yeah, um, I think that Safira did win here. Um, I I think she, that she did a good job. Do you? Of, yeah, I think I think that she told the she told the story. She told a story with her lip sync a little bit. Um, and I I do like that it was a bit of a risk, and that's something that um morphine called out in her diary. She's like, oh, I see what Safira is trying to do. She's trying to like do this whole slow roll type deal first. But no, I'm just going to bust it all out. But I do think that because Safira didn't bust it all out in the beginning, it did leave more room for her to go. And I feel like um, Morphine course sort of had a she had to like stay at one level the entire time, which I think is just not as dynamic of a performance. So I don't think it was a slayage. I don't think it was a murder or anything. But I do think that she won that lip sync. Yeah. So I definitely thought Morphine won. Um, I uh -huh. feel like not every lip sync to be a story uh, not every song to be told in such a you know such a way and uh morphine in you know the diary room being like up oh, i see what safira is doing she wants to give us a little you know like i can't do it over the podcast you won't understand but just the mouth movements of um you know uh walking you through every lyric and like you know making intense eye contact which ultimately is like what worked well for safira here of just making that eye contact with the judges to make them laugh at certain points and make them mm -hmm. pay attention to her because mm -hmm. when you're locking eyes with those people they are locking eyes right back with you to watch exactly what you're going to do um, I thought Morphine did a fantastic job of just like knowing if I'm going to beat Safira, I need to be at, uh, at an 11 or a 12. I can't be at a 10. I can't try to play it small because they're already like, I'm already the underdog going into this. I don't care that this is my fourth lip sync. I know that, you know, track record and whatnot. And just let's, let's be real. Safira is the more likely person to, to survive into another round. So maybe the best I can hope for is that I give a good enough performance that both of us are sent through, not just, you know, maybe it's a double save. Um, so I really thought that morphine just kind of the entire way through um, was more alive, giving more of a performance, giving uh, the whole show. Um, not to say that Safira did a bad job, but just I thought I thought Morphine won this. Um, I by no means in the world ever on this planet do I think that just because I think Morphine would have won or should have won, that Safira should have gone home in fifth place on Drag Race season 16. Absolutely not. That would have um, been a gag. Can you imagine? Not. So if this is like the situation at that, at that point, plane wins. Like at that point, like you can't do that, or narratively, like you've given away the ending at that point. Like we know yeah. what's going to happen. Which is even why though the we show already is know the show is, you know, as overproduced as it is. Um, but you know, besides the point, um, you, you don't send Safira home. This is, you know, a, a top contender to be the winner of your season. Of course, she's not going anywhere, but, um, 
I don't know. You just, you run that risk when you have, uh, you know, there, there's nothing they could have done. They couldn't put, have really put somebody else in the bottom except for Safira. Right. Safira clearly was probably five out of five in this week's challenge, um, even if they tried to make it seem like it was morphine. So I don't know. They couldn't have done anything to be like, oh, well, actually, Q, you go in the bottom. And I, I don't know. Um, Safira, like going into it, you you could tell, like, was confident she enough that she wasn't going home. Her mind if they put her in. <laughs> She would have, and we would have enjoyed to, uh, to watch the meltdown. Um, Safira did not have any kind of fear within her body that she was in danger of going home, but either way, she still put on a great performance. Um, again, I think she did fantastic in the connecting with the judges uh, aspect, and she also, you know, like you said, she brought it out uh, during like the middle of the end of the song. She just started a little bit slower, but um, I, don't I know. think the point there's a there's a YouTube channel, I think that um that analyzes each lip sync. And I think it's called like the moment, the part of the lip sync that wins that queen, the lip sync. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about it through that lens. And I think where she won was the cartwheel, which was a, the car was a little messy at first, but into the split that she revolved around in a circle. And then she pops up onto her, onto her, uh, yeah. to her feet. That moment was like, okay, you got it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just think I just think it was just a little bit more dynamic of a of a performance. But again, morphine clearly ate it up too. It was not it was not like a complete blow out of the water. Um, but uh, yeah, morphine or Safira, like, I mean, it's it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. She was never going to go home. It's just that you can't send her home. So. Nope. And Bean was, uh, you know, even on her way out, she's, you know, walking into the workroom all by herself, giving her a little spiel about, um, you know, I would have liked to make top four, but it didn't sound like, you know, it was coming from a place of like, I expected to make top four. It was like, it would have been nice to make top four. Yeah. I will say this about Safira though. And again, cause I've already, I've kind of shared the sentiment before, excuse me. I do think that yes, there is a bit of an energy that is all, it can be just a little off putting with you girl. Like sometimes Yes, you knew you probably weren't going to go home, but you don't necessarily have to wear that all the time. Like it's okay to 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 not talk about how good you are. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 sometimes I'm like, okay, so if you're like, let's not let's not go there because you are in the bottom after all. So sometimes I do wish that that energy wasn't as present. But you know, if you know if you if you good, you know you good at the same time. It's like talk your shit, girl. This is this is the show to brag. This is yeah. the show where you need to brag. So I mean, you know, it's it's so it's interesting. Solid. I mean, that's what I love about uh, a season like like the all winter season on Drag Race when it, when it actually worked out well. Of you know, Safira clearly you know the top bitch here, uh, maybe alongside you know one or two others that are also performing a similar or maybe like a slightly uh, that kind of level. But like get Safira on the stage with Sasha Colby and you know some other queens that are just also you know giving you everything you're looking for. Um, and I wonder if that same confidence would be there. I'm sure it would because she seems very confident in her work as she should be. But um, it's mm -hmm. just interesting when the dynamics shift and you're a little bit more fearful for your competition rather than knowing, well, I'm going to be in top four. Right. Right. So I would have loved sure. to see also playing in a position like this this week. Like, see how she would have taken, uh, you know, lip syncing right before the finale. Her ass in the bottom that one week. I don't know why they just didn't do it. Just put her in the bottom. I mean, yeah. you, you, you were gonna, it was going to be a save anyway. No one was going to home, but you can still put her in the bottom. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we don't really know what is going to happen um, next week in terms of elimination. Um, we are at the top four. Um, it is going to be another competitive episode. I think the trailer showed them. Actually, I forget what the trailer showed them doing. Uh, uh, they were yeah, they were doing a, uh, a photo shoot. Oh, yep. They're doing a photo shoot with Rue. Okay. So I'm assuming they're probably going to do a photo shoot with him, probably a sit down as well. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, some of those outfits look really killer, by the way, um, in, that, in that photo shoot. So we don't really know. Um, we do get to see even Nymphia say we don't know if it's going to be a top four. It might be. It might not be. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, I personally, I think it's kind of I think we kind of know what will probably happen um, if it is an elimination episode mm -hmm. uh, and it starts with a letter. <laughs> so, <laughs> Why? <laughs> that's probably what's going to happen. Um, but we'll we'll see. I'm, I'm very excited um we're getting down to the wire it's i know that you don't necessarily think this is like one of your fave seasons but it's definitely one of mine i think that i'm just i think that i was just so over season 15 with everything you know we knew what was going to happen um so i just i'm just glad to have like a little bit of intrigue here this season and all the queens are just there's a lot of interesting personalities so yeah. 
anything else that you want to talk about before we close it out? Um, I didn't mention this at the beginning, and I even tweeted about this, the, the BB canification of Drag Race. Get the spawn con out of here. I mean, I know it's not new. <laughs> I know this is happening for forever. But um, opening the episode with the Drag Race Monopoly, I'm like, come on. <laughs> I'm like, let me just go see I how mean, much this is. Amazon, it works. Like anywhere. It works because I want to buy it. it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god! All right, Drag Race uh, Monopoly Party at Amon's, everybody. <laughs> they are they ha- they know that audience. I-, I am a sucker for that type of. But stuff, like, pick so a better I- board game. Nothing against like Monopoly as a whole, but it's know Drag it's a- Race Monopoly. But there's other games like that are less stressful than Monopoly. I would I would. Be I, don't, I don't play Monopoly very often. I think I play Monopoly maybe like once every like three years because that game is. Woo. And then the the prize for the week, uh, plane won five thousand dollars courtesy of Monopoly. So we brought it up again. Um, mm-hmm. And then also the uh, the dancers being there in general was like obviously advertising for the uh, the Vegas show. So uh, just a lot of sponsored content in here. Uh, usually it's all just like oh buy Ru's music, but this was uh, you know some other areas that's also going to put money into RuPaul's mo- uh, pocket. So um, hey. that is uh, Mama got to Mama got to pay the bills. I feel like Rue's music has not been like a forefront this season. Like I feel like there's always like a, unless I'm forgetting already, because you know it's not like Rue's performances on the main stage are like you know super amazing. But um, I feel like there's always like a an album that gets released in, um and then coincides with like the beginning of a season, and then like. I don't know. I just feel like it, that was like not like the the focal point this year. Which you know, whatever, it's fine. I mean, isn't um, the uh the the last episode or two usually have some kind of musical aspect and probably there could be yeah. a song that debuts there or just gets you know reintroduced? I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't we'll know. See. Well, that will be it. Is there anything that you would like to plug, Matt? Of course. Um. So. Uh, actually, uh, have been talking a little drag race here and there, um, over okay. on the, uh, the free agents podcast with myself and Brian Scally. Uh, we mainly cover the, uh, MTV show, the challenge, um, which is actually coming back in about two weeks, a little like a week and a half at this point for, uh, one of the all-star seasons, which are a little different from drag race all-stars, but it is, uh, similar in concept of, uh, just, uh, returnees, the, the, the all-stars on uh, the challenge are people who just don't regularly compete on the main challenge um, these days. Maybe some of the older contestants, people that haven't been around in a while. So all-stars four is uh, coming up very soon. So we will be talking about that. Um, and we've also just been talking about and previewing other, uh, I almost said drag race uh, challenge seasons, uh, but where we've been talking about drag races on our Patreon, uh, along with some other shows that we touch on, you know, here, in there so uh just check out the free agents podcast if that is something that interests you um and i mean i would be remiss to not plug the choir room while aman and i are (laughs) back together just the two of us here on the podcast had a a hit glee tweet uh over the past uh 24 48 hours that you uh, did what took the hell off oh wow aman didn't even see my tweet this man has been muted look i've been in beyonce land for like the past two days okay come on it got it got a kevin McHale like it got a dot marie jones like it what why didn't you tell me you didn't text me what uh i don't know (laughs) um and it's related to uh to your current you know obsession of uh cowboy carter but goodbye (laughs) (laughs) oh where where you go wait (laughs) you can't leave the podcast all the hosts are gone (laughs) Oh, shit, I forgot I'm hosting. You're hosting the show. <laughs> oh, my God. That is hilarious. I can't. So uh... kind of took off. Um, check out the choir room if you are looking for a uh, from <laughs> wall to wall. Room. Not the plug at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> coverage of uh, the uh, Fox television show of, uh, you know, our childhood, Glee. Um, yes. And, uh, yeah, that's oh that's God. the other plug. I'm tweeting this right now. That is fucking hilarious. I love that. Yes, 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 yes. You know, check out the back catalog of the choir room. I think, um, well, I don't know if uh, I don't know if you want me to say this or not, but you might be doing some other glee related content in the yeah, I mean, future. both of us have been popping in and out of uh the Glee of the yeah. Week podcast. I'll be back on there very soon. Um, so yeah, just still keeping the glee conversation alive because sure. why would we let it die? For sure. Um, yeah, you can um Follow me at Amon Adwin everywhere. Um, not really doing too much right now, except Drag Race, obviously, here. Um, and then a little bit of BB Can 12 coverage. I think that I will be on one. I forget which day I'm recording. Sam's going to kill me. But I'll be on the show this week. <laughs> so make sure that you check us out over there. And I believe that is 
it for me. Um, thank you guys so much. I hope that Matt and I were able to um, to serve up this recap in the best way possible. Liana and Beth should be back next week, um, and we will pick things up from where we left off. Really, really excited. Thank you so much again, Matt, for coming in and gabbing with me. I was always a little worried that when we have lesser people that it's going to be like you're going to run out of things to talk about because there's more time for you to talk, but we're about to clock in at an hour 30. So we possibly we really, podcast about Glee for, for literally like longer than a year's worth of time. I know. <laughs> we find things to talk about. We find things to talk about for sure. All right. Thank you guys so much. We will be back next week and happy Easter once again and Trans Day of Visibility. Bye.